For today's video, I'm going to be going over one of the most requested topics that I've gotten, and that is how to approach your survivor squads. And this is mainly for new people. If you've been playing as long as I have, then chances are you already know everything I'm about to go over. Alright, so there's three different ways to increase your commander power level. One way your power level increases is through party members. If you're playing with other people who have unlocked skills like this one, that increases your party member's stats. It'll also increase yours. You can tell how much their skills increase your power level by looking at the blue power level that's directly to the left of your original power level. So that's one way your power level increases is through party members. Another way you can increase your power level is through research and skill trees. Whenever you unlock one of the fort skills, which is fortitude, offense, resistance, or tech, or if you unlock one of the party member skills, it's going to increase your power level. And the third way you can increase your power level is from survivor squads. Now there's a total of eight squads, and there's going to be two squads designated for each type of stat. So there's going to be two fortitude squads, which is going to help increase your health. There's going to be two offensive squads, which is going to help increase the amount of damage you do with weapons. There's two resistance squads, which is going to increase your shield. And there's two tech squads, which is going to increase the amount of damage you do with abilities and traps. And when you first start out, you're not going to have that many survivor slots unlocked. In order to get those survivor slots, you will have to unlock them on the research and skill trees. Obviously, unlocking a slot and adding a survivor to a specific squad is going to increase that squad's stats. Now, when you're in Stonewood and Plankerton, you're going to want to try to level up all of your survivors, no matter what squad they're in. Try to level them up to at least 10. That way, you'll have a little bit of health and shield when you reach Candy Valley. But once you get the canny, you're going to want to start focusing on either offensive squads or the tech squads. And I say you want to focus on one of those two because those are the two types of squads that are going to help you kill Husk. And whether or not you should choose offense or tech depends on your play style. If you like playing with soldiers and getting kills with weapons, you're going to want to focus on offense squads. And if you like getting kills with traps and your abilities, you're going to want to focus on the tech squads. One thing I should probably mention though, is that if you do invest in your tech squads, you'll also want to try to invest a little in your offensive squads as well, because the abilities do have a cooldown. So you'll most likely end up having to use your weapons anyway. So if you do decide to make tech your main stat, then you may also want to try to increase your offense as well. That way you'll be able to do damage while your abilities are cooling down. Now, when it comes to survivor squads, your number one priority are survivor leads, which is going to be the slot you have to fill at the far left of every squad. So yeah, when it comes to lead survivors, you're going to want to put in your highest rarity lead survivor that matches the job type. If you don't have a lead survivor that matches the job type, then just slot the highest rarity lead that you have. And lead survivors are the only survivors that can come in a mythic rarity. And once you've gotten a mythic survivor for a specific squad, you're basically set when it comes to that lead survivor slot. All you'll have to do at that point is find epic and legendary survivors with matching personalities. And the last thing you should focus on when slotting your survivors is to try to match the bonuses or the skills. And those skills are like melee damage bonuses, range damage bonuses, trap damage, health, shield, shield regen, things like that. So to sum things up when it comes to lead survivors, the first thing you want to do is find the highest rarity lead survivor that you have that matches the job type. Then you want to try to match the survivor's personalities. And then once you've done those, you can try matching the bonuses. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you all of the different personalities as well as the different skill bonuses. Here's a visual guide to the mythic lead survivor personalities. And there's only a total of three different personalities for every type of lead mythic survivor. All right, so starting off with the first column at the very top, you can see that it has the EMT symbol, which means it's the EMT squad. It's one of the fortitude squads. And directly below that EMT symbol, you can see the three possible personalities that that lead survivor can have. So sticking with the EMT example, this first personality is competitive. The second possible personality for a lead survivor in the EMT squad is the analytical personality. And the third possible personality you can have for your lead survivor is the pragmatic personality. And you can see all of the possible personalities for each type of squad. And this is going to help you identify which survivor personalities you're going to need for a specific squad. And again, I'll be leaving a link to this image in the description if you want to go check it out for yourself. 
Now when it comes to your other survivor slots, the main thing you want to look out for is rarity. If your main focus is offense, then you want to slot all of your legendaries in one of the offense squads. Higher rarity survivors gain more points per level in evolution than lower rarity survivors. Once you've gotten the highest rarity for all of your survivor slots, the next thing you want to focus on is trying to match the personalities. Because if you match the personalities, you're going to get a bonus. And the last thing you want to focus on when it comes to your survivors are the matching bonuses or the matching skills. And matching enough of these skills in the same squad is going to give you a bonus. But yeah, that's the approach you want to use when it comes to survivor slots. First, you want to focus on rarity, then try to match the personalities, and then try to match the bonuses. And you're going to want to try to level up your lead survivors first before you level up your other survivors. Try to get your lead survivors at least 10 levels ahead of your other survivors. And the reason I say that is because you get more stats for your lead survivors compared to your regular survivors. And it's much more efficient to level up your leads first. Now, evolving survivors gives you more stats than leveling up a survivor from 1 to 10. So if you had to choose between leveling up a survivor that's at level 1 or evolving a survivor that's at level 10, I would recommend that you evolve the survivor before leveling the other one up. Now, if all of your survivors have the same level, you're going to want to level them up at the same time. So let's say, for example, all of your survivors have a level of 10. Instead of leveling one survivor to level 20, you're going to want to level all of your survivors to level 11. One of the best missions that I know of when it comes to farming survivor XP or any type of XP for that matter is the live with the bomb missions. Just try to make sure you complete all of the objectives like finding the Rith within a certain amount of time, not going over the build limit, and completing the mission fast enough so you get the speed run bonus, and also try to fill up your combat building and utility bar. And if you've done all those things, you should get a level six loot chest and a decent amount of XP. Usually when we complete all of those objectives in late canny and early twine, I get somewhere between 20 and 30,000 XP. And again, not only can you do that for survivor XP, but you can also do that mission for hero and schematic XP as well. So yeah, that's the mission I would recommend doing if you're trying to farm survivor XP. And obviously you're going to need training manuals in order to evolve your survivors. And what I do in order to get training manuals is I transform all of my green and gray items into blue survivors and then I recycle those blue survivors because every time you recycle a blue survivor or a hero or a defender you should get a training manual but yeah I just transform my greens and my grays into blue survivors recycle those survivors and you'll get a bunch of training manuals that way and I guess the last thing I should point out is how you can get survivors sometimes you'll see them as rewards from missions you can also get them from people llamas as well as super people llamas. A couple of other good llamas you can get survivors from are the legendary llamas, like legendary troll loot truck llamas and legendary troll stash llamas. And you can also get them from event llamas as well. And I guess technically you can get them from the regular upgrade llamas as well. But yeah, those are the llamas you want to look out for if you're trying to get some better survivors. Up to this point, we've gotten survivors as reward from only a couple of events. We just got an epic leprechaun survivor from the St. Patrick's Day event. And we were also able to get some legendary and epic survivors from the Halloween event as well. But it seems like with most events, we don't get survivors, which is one of the reasons why I always choose survivors when I have to choose between a legendary survivor or a legendary ranged weapon. A lot of people have been criticizing me and calling me names because I chose the legendary survivor. But like I said, events normally don't give survivors as rewards. And higher rarity means everything when you're trying to increase your stats. And as you can tell, I still have a lot of epic survivors. So that's why I never pass up a legendary survivor when I get the opportunity. But yeah, those are some of the different ways you can get survivors. So that about sums up everything I'm going to go over in regards to survivor squads. If there's any tips that I didn't mention, or if you have any questions that I didn't answer, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if there's anything else you would like for me to do a guide for, let me know about that as well. Anyways, I hope y'all found the video useful, and thanks for watching.